Anastasia, Book 1, Chapter 10, Her Beloved Thatchniks. Anastasia enthusiastically exclaimed, explained to me how many new opportunities could open up for people who communicate with plants. There were two major subjects she talked about, not only with particular excitement and animation, but I would have to admit with a kind of love, namely bringing up children on the one hand and Dachniks on the other. According to everything she said about these people and the importance she attached to them, we would all need to literally bow on our knees before them. Just think, according to her, the, da the Dachniks have not only managed to save the whole nation from famine, from famine, but also sown seeds of good in people's hearts and are educating the society of the future. There are far too many points to enumerate here. One would need a whole book and Anastasia kept on arguing, trying to demonstrate this. You see, the society you are living in today can learn a lot from communication with the plants to be found around Dutch, Duchess. Yes, I am talking about the Duchess, where you personally know every individual plant in your garden plot and not those huge impersonal fields cultivated by monstrous, senseless machines. People feel better when they are working in their dacha plots. Many of them end up living longer. They become kinder. And it is this very dachnik that can pave the way for society to become aware of how destructive the technocratic path can be. Anastasia whether that's true or not is, for the time being, besides the point. What is your role in all of this? What kind of help can you offer? Taking me by the arm, she led me over to the grass. We lay on our backs. The palms of our hands turn upward. Close your eyes. Let's go and try to picture to yourself what I am saying. Right now, I shall take a look with my ray and locate at a distance some of those people you call Dachniks. After a period of silence, she began to say softly, an old woman is unwrapping a piece of cheesecloth in which cucumber seeds have been soaking. The seeds have already begun to develop square, have already begun to develop quite a bit. And I can see little sprouts. Now she has picked up a seed. I have just suggested to her that she should not soak the seed so much. They will, they will become deformed when they are planted. And this kind of water is not good for them. The seed will go bad. She thinks she herself must have guessed that. And that is partially true. I just help her guess a bit. Now she will share her idea and tell other people about it. This little deed is done. Anastasia told me how she visualized in her consciousness all sorts of situation involving work, recreation, and people's interaction, both with each other and with plants. When the situation she has visualized comes closer to reality, contacts is established whereby she can see the person and feel what this person is suffering or sensing. She herself then as it were, steps into the image of the person and shares her expertise with them. Anastasia said that plants react to people, to man with love or hate, 
and exercise a positive or negative influence on people's health. And here is where I have an enormous amount of work to do. I keep myself busy with the Jatra garden plots. The Dutchniks travel out to their plots, their plantings. They are like their own children. But unfortunately, their relationship to them is still pretty much on the level of intuition. They still do not have the foundation that comes with a clear realization of the true purpose behind this relationship. Everything but everything on earth, every blades of grass, every insects has been created for man. And everything has its undivided appointed task to perform in the service of men. The multitude of medicinal plants are a confirmation of this. But people in your world know very little about how to benefit from the opportunities they are presented with, about how to take full advantage of them. I ask Anastasia to show some concrete example of the benefits of conscious communication. An example that could be seen, verify, and practice, and subject to scientific investigation. Anastasia thought for a little while, then suddenly brightened and exclaimed, The Dutchniks, my beloved Dutchnik, they will prove it all. They will show what is true and confound all your science. Now, how is it? I did not think of that or understand it before. Some kind of brand new idea made her bubble over with joy. The whole time I was with her, not once did I see Anastasia sad. She can be serious, thoughtful, and concentrate, but more often than not, delighting in something. This time her joy literally bubbled over. She jumped up and clapped her hands and it seemed to me as though the whole forest had become brighter and began to stir, responding to her the rust with the rustling of treetops and the singing of birds. She whirled round and round as though she were doing a kind of dance. And all radiant, she once again sat down beside me and said, Now they will believe, all on account of them, my dear. That's next. They will explain and prove everything. Trying to bring her a little more quickly back to the topic of our interrupted conversation, I noted, not necessarily. You say that every insect has been created for man's benefit. But how can people believe that when they look with so much loading on the cockroach crawling over the kitchen tables? What can it be that they too have been created for a benefit? Cockroaches, declared Anastasia, will only crawl over a dirty table to collect the remains of any food particles lying about particles too small for the human eye to see. They process them and render them harmless before discarding them in some, some, in some secluded spot. If there are so many of them, simply bring a frog into the house and the surplus cockroaches will disappear at once. What Anastasia went on to propose the Dutchniks do well probably contradict the principles of the plant science and will certainly contradict the commonly accepted methods of planting and cultivating various garden plant crops. Her affirmations, however, are so collagial that it seems to me they will be worth trying out for anyone with the opportunity to do so. Maybe not throughout their whole plot, but at least in one small section of it, especially since nothing harmful and only good could come off, come off of it. Besides, much of what she told me has already been confirmed by the experiments of the biological science expert, Mikhail P 
Krakow.